A world where the balance of power hinges not just on battles and alliances, but on the often overlooked journey of nobles traversing the medieval lands. Wandering Nobles is here, and it's flipping the script on how we play Crusader Kings 3. Right out of the gate, Crusader Kings 3 thrives on unpredictability, and Wandering Nobles leans heavily into this unpredictability to fantastic effect. The expansion introduces a new, wandering lifestyle with three branches, Inspector, Wayfarer, and Voyager. Each branch brings something unique to the table, whether it's surveying and improving your realm, reducing stress through travel, or enhancing linguistic skills by visiting special locations in other realms. The new activities tied to these branches, inspection, hike, and monument expedition, offer fresh ways to engage with your realm. For example, an inspection can help you identify areas of improvement, while a hike might allow your character to relieve stress and gain insights from foreign cultures. These activities lend a sense of exploration and movement, keeping the gameplay fresh and full of surprises. One of the standout features of Wandering Nobles is the dynamic interaction with travelers, exiles, and refugees. Suddenly, a new character appears in your court. A noble without a home, armed only with a prestigious lineage and desperate ambition. They want to join you, bring along a few retainers, and maybe even create a stir in your realm. This addition spices up the experience, making every court session feel alive and unpredictable. It's not uncommon to suddenly have an exiled lord arrive at your court with a whole subplot in tow, their loyalty uncertain, their motives mysterious. You may find yourself tempted to back their claim to another kingdom or exploit their presence for your own gain. Another core aspect is the emphasis on diplomacy. Wandering nobles are not just pawns for your ambitions. They have agendas of their own. Whether it's securing alliances, looking for safe haven, or rekindling claims to lost titles, these wandering characters have ambitions that can either complement or disrupt your carefully laid plans. You'll find yourself asking if you can trust a new guest, or whether this rogue knight could be the turning point in your feud with a rival duchy. And the answer? Often, it's both. The interactions feel organic and bring even more character to a game already brimming with life. In one playthrough, I found myself befriending a wandering former queen who was overthrown by a cousin. She quickly found her way into my inner circle, and when the time came, I had the opportunity to help restore her to the throne. Of course, for the right price. Whether or not that gamble pays off is never certain, but that's what makes the expansion so compelling. The thrill of risk versus reward. One area where I think the expansion really shines is in how it uses wandering nobles to shake up succession crises. The presence of wandering family members, especially those with a tenuous claim to your lands, can complicate inheritance in delicious ways. Just when you think you have your line of succession neatly organized, some ambitious uncle returns from exile with half the court behind him, ready to challenge your son's claim. The impact on gameplay is immense, forcing you to rethink what loyalty really means in a world of shifting alliances and constant betrayals. While the visuals and UI tweaks in Wandering Nobles are not the main attraction, they are worth mentioning. The new map markers for noble encampments and traveler locations help keep track of what's happening across your domain. It can get chaotic, but in a way that feels true to the medieval theme, like you're ruling in a world that's constantly in flux. There are also some updated character portraits, particularly for wandering or displaced nobles, which help add depth to these travelers as you deal with them. With all that said, Wandering Nobles isn't perfect. The new wandering mechanics, while interesting, can sometimes feel like they add a bit too much chaos without enough tools to control the fallout. The charm of Crusader Kings 3 is its unpredictability, but there were times when I was left feeling frustrated by the lack of agency in dealing with these unruly visitors. Some players might love that, relishing the pure drama of an unexpected turn, but others might find it a bit overwhelming. Also, for those players who prefer a slower, more methodical approach, the constant stream of wanderers might be exhausting rather than exciting. Ultimately, Wandering Nobles is an expansion that's best suited for players who love the storytelling aspect of Crusader Kings 3. It's rich with new opportunities for drama, betrayal, and political intrigue. If you're the kind of player who enjoys plotting elaborate schemes and doesn't mind when your plans are turned upside down, you're going to have a great time. The nomadic element injects a sense of adventure that makes it stand out among other expansions. And let's face it, Crusader Kings has always been about those stories you tell your friends about how your entire kingdom fell apart thanks to one rogue uncle. 
The expansion breathes new life into an already amazing game, giving you fresh stories, more diverse challenges, and countless new ways to see your plans either come to fruition or come crashing down in the most entertaining way possible. So if you love the chaos, the adventure, and the sprawling stories that Crusader Kings 3 can offer, Wandering Nobles is well worth your time. We give Crusader Kings 3. Wandering Nobles a solid 8 out of 10. If you enjoyed this review, be sure to like and subscribe for more in-depth looks at the games you love. Let us know in the comments below if you're playing Wandering Nobles and share your favorite stories. We'd love to hear them. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.